Hello, and thank you for joining me for our webinar on automating security rules in Panorama. My name is Jerry Dollins, and I'm a senior solutions architect on the proofs of concept team here at iTential, where I get to help customers solve problems like this every day. Now, before we get into the demo, let's talk about how iTential can help you automate your security rule changes. First off, while today's demo is focused on Panorama, iTential supports automating any type of firewall. With iTential, you can build in robust pre and post checks to ensure that your network is in the proper state both before and after the change is made. Now, I often hear from network engineers that they spend most of their time on the paperwork than the actual network change itself. So on top of automating your pre and post checks, iTential also enables you to automate the business process around your network changes. So things like creating and updating tickets and sending notifications are no longer a manual effort. Lastly, with iTential, you can easily make your automations available to users via an API call or through a form like we'll see today. Okay, let's talk about our demo. We'll be using iTential's pre-built Panorama adapter today to integrate with the system. We'll take a look at a form that we'll use for capturing user input and then review our pre-built automation that will create our security rules. And finally, we'll create an automation and operations manager that allows us to do two things. One, tie all of our work together and two, publish our automation so that along with us, other users can now run it themselves. On the right-hand side is a diagram showing the flow between systems in our demo today. Starting from the top, we have our users, say from a network or a security team, who are able to run automations from operations manager within the platform. This will kick off our workflow, which then talks to Panorama using our open source adapter. And of course, Panorama then manages the Palo Alto firewalls. Okay, let's take a look at the workflow that will be creating our security rules in Panorama. Now, the first step here in this workflow is a transformation. Transformation is iTensil's low-code solution to data manipulation. They're quite helpful when you need to take data in one format and convert it to another, like perhaps taking an API response from one system and converting it to the payload you need to send to another. They're also great for processing the data submitted in a form, which is what the first step here is doing today. Now, our next two steps are evaluations. And basically, an evaluation allows us to ask a question. In the top evaluation, we're asking if the user has chosen to create a security pre-rule. And in the bottom one, if they've chosen to create a security post rule. Now, following each evaluation is a child job, which allows us to nest one workflow within another. Here, it will run the appropriate workflow to create the rule type selected. Finally, we have one more child job. In this last step, it will commit the new rule in Panorama. Let's take a deeper look at a few steps in our workflow. Our first one, the transformation here. This is the one that processes the data entered in a form and prepares it for use in our workflow. Now we can see on the right-hand side, we're simply taking in a single variable called form data. And that's the data that gets sent into the workflow when we kick it off from our form. In this automation, the transformation is passing through some of the data from our form as is, but it's also doing some data manipulation like converting a true false value from the form to the yes, no value that Panorama expects. After our transformation, we have the two evaluations. They simply look at the rule type selected by the user, and if it matches their expected type, they allow flow to continue. Because the user can only select either a pre-rule or a post-rule, only one of these paths will ever execute. Following the evaluation, we have our child jobs that create the rules. These workflows also are iTential pre-builds. Let's go ahead and take a look at one of these looks like. Here we're looking at the one that will create a security pre-rule. Now I want you to think about the manual steps you follow today for creating a security rule. You probably first check to make sure the rule doesn't already exist. You'll then create the rule and confirm that it now shows in the system. If at any point something doesn't look right, you'll evaluate the situation and determine the best course of action. What we're looking at in the workflow is that same process here. Let me walk you through each step and you'll see how this aligns with the manual process I just outlined. Now the first step here is a transformation and this time it builds the payloads that we're sending to Panorama. So it's collecting the information that we need in order to then provide it to the system. The next step is our pre-check. And here, we're making sure that the rule we're about to create doesn't already exist. 
Now, after that, we have a pair of query tasks. Now, these query tasks allow us to extract a single value from a larger chunk of data. In this case, we're grabbing the result of the previous task in the event of both a success response and an error response. After that, then, is our evaluation here. And in this case, we're checking to see if that pre-check was successful. If not, an error is shown to the user, and they are given the option to retry the pre-check or continue with the provisioning. That next task then sends the request to create the rule. And in this case, of course, it will be the uh, security pre-rule. Now, if there's an error in this step, we actually query out that error message first and show it to the user. The user then has the choice of either retrying the provisioning step or simply ending the automation. After our rule is created, we have our post check. And that's followed by one more evaluation here. This time, we are confirming that the rule now does exist in Panorama. If it's not there, an error is shown to the user. And again, they are given the option to either retry the provisioning step or end the automation. OK. Once our new security rule has been created, we have one last step to our workflow. And that's committing the rule in Panorama. And that's handled by this last child job here. All right, let's go ahead and run our automation. We'll be using a manual trigger on our automation in Operations Manager, which lets us use a form to kick things off. Now, this form was built in the platform using a drag and drop interface that makes it easy to put one together without having to write a single line of code. Now, I've gone ahead and pre-filled that form for us today, but you can see that I'm providing the rule name and the description along with the policy type and other associated settings. And if I scroll down a bit, you can see that we have our source and destination zones and addresses that will be applied to this rule. So let's go ahead and kick things off here. Now here we can see our job as it runs. And you'll notice that this one moved pretty quick. The automation has taken our form data and transformed it. It then has determined that it's a pre-rule and followed only that path. Security pre-rule was then created before finally committing the rule in Panorama. All right, so let's take a look at our new rule in Panorama. And here we can see our new rule. You can tell by, of course, our name, as well as our zones and our addresses here, all matching up to what we entered in our form there. OK, now that we've created our rule, let me show you how easily we can take this from an automated task and turn it into an end-to-end -end orchestrated process. First off, what we can do is we can add the workflow we just ran to our canvas here. And by just adding a few more tasks, we can pull in a few more potential pre-built automations to implement creating a change request in ServiceNow, waiting for it to be approved, as well as updating and closing that ticket. And of course, we should add in sending out a notification in Microsoft Teams. Now, by grabbing all of these here, we can create our change request. We can then create our security rule in Panorama. We can update our change request. We can send out our notification in Microsoft Teams before finally closing our change request. And that will be the end of our automation. OK, folks, that brings us to the end of our demonstration. But let's summarize what we covered today. We reviewed and ran an automation that starts with a form in Operations Manager. It processes the data submitted in that form and prepares it for our automation. It then goes and creates and commits a new security pre-rule in Panorama. We also took a look at how, by using a few more potential pre-built automations, you can quickly turn your automated task into a robust end-to-end -end orchestrated process. Thank you for your time today. One last thing before we end the webinar. Here at Itential, we offer free hands-on technical workshops. And this is one of the many use cases we offer where you can spend time with someone from our team and try it out yourself. You can check it out at itential.com slash automation workshop. 
take a look at all of our use cases and let us know which one you want to try.